how I remember um, Final Curtain starting was um, I bumped into Fergus and Adam outside the Hen and Chickens and um, we wandered down the road to the Orwin Castle pub, had, had a drink and we were bemoaning the sort of lack of actually doing projects and, uh, and about three pints in we started saying, well, why don't we use the theatre at the Hen and Chicken since we have a use for it? And then about eight pints in, <laughs> wasn't, was it? <laughs> yeah, we, we decided, right, let's make this film. So we're, we're, we'll go away, we'll write a script and, and you know, sort of do this. And, and I think um, woke up the next day and Adam had written the script and, and sent it over and it was great. And so then it was, yes, it, the ball was rolling. So I think within a couple of weeks, even, we were in the theater and filming. Is that correct? Are my memories correct? Uh, the, the, the alcohol part of it is definitely correct. <laughs> um, I think you're underestimating how surprised we were that Adam actually wrote a script. The next morning he was like, right, got it. We're like, got what? What are you talking about? We, I remember drinking beer and talking about how we should do a film. What do you mean you've got it? Or well, that script we were talking about, it's here. And we read it, and, and, and I think we were just as shocked that he'd actually written something that night. We were equally shocked that it cohered in any way. It wasn't just the drumpling, drunk, drunken ramblings of the fool. Um, <laughs> but no, it, was, it was good. It was really funny. The twist was really cool as well. I remember that, like, straight away, going, oh, sh this, this whole script is... It must have taken you, what, three hours to write it, Adam? And it was pretty much... Perfect. Well, it was one of the, I, like, as soon as we had the conversation, I walked home, which was, I say, not a long walk, but maybe like 35, 40 minutes. And then I think on the walk, I was just thinking about the structure of it. And I think it's one of those things where, like, because it's, I, I don't know, the, the, the script ended up being about 20 pages, I think. And so, like, when you've got the structure, or I've, at least for, for me, I feel like when I've got the structure of something, then the rest kind of just fills itself out it's just like getting from a to b i guess it, it needed a bit of you know funnying up afterwards but most of it was just getting the skeleton of it done and i just yeah i, I because i was drunk it made me sort of that weird sort of proactive drunk like have you ever got drunk at a house party and then started doing the dishes because no i know what you mean yeah I've, I've i've had that before and, and i just got back and i think i worked from like eight till 4 a.m. or something and then got up really early and carried on working on it because at that point I wanted it to be like oh I've got to do this by tomorrow now because it'll be really cool and then I did that and then just sent it off but yeah it was it was really fun to write. You could tell you were excited about the script as well more so than potentially other things that you've written because you sent it to me quite I think quick quite soon after yeah. you, you'd written it um, and told me that it was quite a, uh, a fast turnaround um, but I wasn't, I wasn't surprised because it was really good. Like I remember thinking, I, I, I think I did say to you at the time, I was like, this is one of the best things you've written. Like certainly one of the best. And that's a know, high bar. Thought, that's a very, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, even for you, even for you, that's incredible. Well done. Um, I do, you, you are being crazy modest as well. That the, the, do you know how annoying it is? for someone who's not good at writing to hear, well, we had the structure, so all I had to do was fill in the gaps, <laughs> basically just create a couple of really believable three-dimensional characters, I was a few jokes, some linguistic thematics, you know, it's just, just toss it off. I was really jealous as well. I remember that was one, that was one thing I thought, like having tried to, you know, stab my way into writing, um, I, yeah, really thought that was, uh, yeah, it was, it was good reading it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's, uh, you're all far too kind annoyingly, and annoyingly, annoyingly good. <laughs> yeah. Kindness and bitterness. The <laughs> lockdown story. <laughs> um, I think it was one of those things, though, where if I had stopped writing and come back to it, like, a couple of days later without having finished it, I don't think I would have made it as... as, as I wouldn't have been as happy with it as I was. It's something about, like, working all the way through it and, like, not stopping that I think kind of, like, let me have as much creativity with it and the drunkenness. I don't know what it was, but I've never, I haven't written anything better since, I don't think. And it is the drunkenness. So Adam, not much changed, did it, really, from when we went into the rehearsals, but in terms of the lines and stuff, because obviously we were in there quite quickly. But yeah. I don't remember you sort of altering much of it either, because it was really solid. It was really well crafted, wasn't it? I can't remember how much was changed, actually. I think maybe like, because me and Fergus went back and forth with it a couple of times. 
because there was some and a lot of it was like continuity and things like that a couple of continuity um, bits a, a, a couple of tweaks to that final speech which is really yeah important. i remember it wasn't the script we never had any trepidation with because we loved the idea of it so much um adam your trepidation came from performing in it yeah than the writing of it um, yeah i was i was pretty concerned about like even though it's it's a silly idea for a script and stuff and it's like fun and silly and there's funny bits there's still like a bit of like weight that i suppose is is necessary from the performer and so i felt a bit like a bit of the old i don't know if i say imposter syndrome that it implies that i know that i've got imposter syndrome and that i'm actually good <laughs> but you still have to say that so no. i'm gonna call it imposter syndrome let's call but it like, true imposter true imposter syndrome right <laughs> true imposter. You're, you're actually an imposter but i just i just kind of like yeah it was it was the, the the idea of having to sort of like act with this sort of weight and stuff that i don't really feel qualified for and i would have preferred to have found someone who had more experience in delivering sort of like weighty lines and was able to sort of like flit between comedy and serious a bit better but that was yeah i think that was my main concern was the performance of it because to me it makes it's one of the biggest things like it it's sort of like you know a melody in a pop song like the lyrics are important but the melody is king isn't it really so it's like i kind of feel that sometimes with, with performing it's like you know i'd rather see an amazing performance of an average script sometimes than an amazing script done badly I've so, said exactly the same thing about jokes specifically. I'd much rather see a poorly written joke well performed definitely. than a well written joke poorly performed. But at the same, um, at the same time, Adam, the, the, the best things come out of the things that are most challenging. Like if it's just easy all the time, then you don't really create in the way that I saw that difficult scene for you and it was hard. But I think the end result was pretty good. I think you should feel pretty proud of what you did there. Oh, and I think that, that is born out of that dichotomy for you that you had that struggle yeah possibly it's true. i appreciate that yeah it's um it was a tricky old tricky old boy but we got there and then and then we roped you guys in louis and theo to, to 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 actually make the thing um and theo for you it was mostly just two days of sweating and arms <laughs> and going i don't think i can hold the camera up for yeah much yeah longer. yeah that was that was basically it i it was kind of the first uh proper shoot I, i'd used gimbal a couple of times just like for like the odd shot but this was like the first full-on kind of shoot where i was using um a gimbal pr i mean we used it on like quite a few of the, the shots as well um so that was um that was a learning curve for sure <laughs> um but uh but yeah it was uh it was it was great to just i think actually like from a shooting perspective as well, it was great to have the setting that we did, the Hen and Chickens Theatre. So you, that was the other thing as well, is that you guys ended up we went setting it in the same place where it was originally born, right? Um, yeah, or the idea and where it would probably end up having a screening as well, which would be quite <laughs> weird, like infinite regression. You're watching a screen <laughs> on a stage that's showing the stage you're sitting on. And, and in real life, that's where we'll all end up. <laughs> when, when COVID takes everybody, we'll end up there. So it's really going to be then an art imitating, a life imitating art situation. Um, yeah, it was, great. it was a great setting to shoot in. As well. well, one of the things um, I, I kind of, I just remember so much was just the traffic noise as well, though. That was, that was sort of, yeah. you know, for, 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 you know, being the last people on earth, there, were not, there was an awful lot of lorries. <laughs> Um, and, uh, that cut. was all that was all in their imagination <laughs> it was they were remembering civilization before uh, it, it was also mind. it was also in that when we were under the cellar bit and just overhead is that um the thing where the barrels go in yes. to load up the barrels and there was just every now and then there's just footsteps over it we, we really oh, we, for fuck's sake Who's that? What, what wild animal is that out there? <laughs> ah, zombies. Must be a passing doe. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we really found out why studios are a thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have filmed in Oh, okay, on, right, on, yeah. Quiet scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. James, did you have any misgivings about your performance? You were great in it, but, but your character comes across as quite an arsehole. 
yeah. quite a brutal asshole <laughs> on the first watch. That's why I had we had you in mind for when I was <laughs> yeah. writing it. I was just picturing your face the whole way through. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I just played myself. I just <laughs> played, it was easy, really. Less camp though. But the second viewing, you realise actually the character again. It's a testament to Adam's writing. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just, just keep complimenting Adam. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the second time you watch the, the, the performance, you realise he's not a bastard at all. He's not insulting. He's actually trying to be quite uplifting. Yeah. Even when I changed the potentially has... the second time you watched it, though. <laughs> but really good actors can do that. A new camera that you can just change it every time. You can just you know, decide what performance you're giving for that screening. Wow. That's great. Can you get yourself in focus and everything? <laughs> no, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, that ending. Should we talk about the ending of the film? Okay. Yes. Because it was really cool. It's a really cool ending to a film, I think, a year ago. Um, because it 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 said so many things. It revealed so many things. And I am I'm so proud that on the second time you watch the film, you realise that there are so the, the themes are deep there. If you want to find them, there's things about needing to create, even if it doesn't mean anything, even if there's not an audience for it. Creating is is should be about itself and for its own merits and about camaraderie and escape, and 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 that's what the thing is to reveal that actually there's no one to come and see the show or no one to be on, on Reese's Instagram, you know, like all that stuff. I, I found it very touching. Like it's, 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 it's quite fun. Um, way to end the movie. Now that coronavirus is around, those ending shots of an empty city, they're definitely not as impressive as they were <laughs> a year ago. Oh my God, an empty city. Well done. Um, <laughs> just go to the West End now and it's, it's that. It's like that. It's like the end of Final Curtain. Um, so I guess what am, what am I saying, Adam? Was it was was it? Did you have a premonition? Did you know this was going to happen? Was this always a coronavirus film? He's I... patient. He's patient zero. <laughs> so we all know that. If I'm being a hundred percent honest, um, I developed coronavirus in a sort of guerrilla filmmaking style of marketing, and it went awry. <laughs> it really did get out of hand a lot quicker than I thought. <laughs> well, you, I started you... it abroad to lay off the, to, to get the scent off me. I didn't sure. want the heat from the coppers. But uh, yeah, that what was. Are, cool. What are the PR companies like in Wuhan? Are they all <laughs> right? Very, very accommodating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a foolhardy uh, decision. No, it's it's funny because I, I can't even remember thinking what the cause of what the reason for them not being outside was going to be. We didn't even settle. Like we didn't even settle on it, it is this, that's the reason they can't leave. You know, it was sort of like the idea that there was a, a general, um, you know, what's the word virus or, you know, something had been unleashed, but in, 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 in the dream world of the film, it's not like you can go out with a mask and it's like, it's just like the hundred percent of the air is virus. I, yeah, I thought I thought I got that feeling that it was like some sort of. I remember oh, of course, discussing I it um, where it was some sort of um, toxic airborne mm. presence, <laughs> and that was about it. Yeah, I think I think so. We we had plans. There was a plan I had vaguely at the. Um, uh, see, Adam's a man of so many talents. He's now playing a statue, so I, I did have a plan of. Um, uh, when I was getting those kind of empty shots of the city streets to kind of just have something dash in front of the camera, just, just really quickly. So to take it away from the idea that it's a, a, a pandemic and towards the idea that it's a, uh, um, there's monsters out there or it's a zombie I, I, or I like a zombie thing or something like that. I remember that. And then what, what happened to that idea exactly? Were you, cause, cause I remember you were going to just sort of comp something on right in the edit and yeah, just kind yeah. of make it look like, oh, a shadow and a kind of um, beastly feral noise <laughs> that kind of comes from it as it passes across. The yeah, screen. that was, that was going to be the idea, a real nasty snarling left to right stereo sound. And then of course you, you have that moment as a director, you know, you guys know this where you turn around and go, oh, that's shit. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just like it's. It's not even a. It's not even a bad idea. It's just a half idea. It's, you've got it's in your head about that, it. You've got exactly. in your head about it. You know. We no, all, if, no yeah. it's more. It's more if we had. I'm imagining something that Hollywood could achieve, <clears throat> and a, a exactly. six-frame dash of something across the camera that could be some monster could be rendered 
for a few thousand quid, sure. It could be rendered very well. But I have to yeah. I have to defer back to my producers to ask what was what was the budget on this one again? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but um yeah, because I, I, I seem to remember that you know, I was talking about it and and saying, you know, is there gonna be like crowds of half dead zombies outside sort of and you know coming <laughs> coming to see the play. <laughs> <laughs> queuing up, queuing up at uh, me uh, two meters distance. <laughs> I'm only half dead. I still love the arts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but uh, yes, yeah, so I, th I think in the end it was one that sort of a, a budget decision, wasn't it? We can't afford anyone, so let's make it. There is no one. But but I like I prefer that it's kind of open. I think mm. I love that it's just like there's a there's a you know, you fill in the blanks kind of thing. You know, there's an, there's an apocalypse out there. For one reason or another, they can't leave. Um, so what, Adam, what Adam did is, you know, basically we're a year down the line and there's been a pandemic, uh, but it could have been, you know, the guttural sound of a werewolf, couldn't it? Like, yeah. It yeah. Happened again. So who knew, you know? We've got eyes. <laughs> well, Adam. By the, well, apparently Adam, yeah. yeah. By the same token, though, I think, I think if you, you have a... I don't know if you guys do this. This is very. This is. I'm maybe about to reveal something really weird. But I kind of have a list of things I wouldn't mind the audience discussing after the film, and things I'd rather they weren't questioning. Like if they if they're asking this question, then the film hasn't done its job correctly, kind of thing, right? Or they haven't done. Going, or they haven't done their watching correctly. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fair enough too, because if because you can come out of loads of films and ask a million questions that the the rest of the audience will understand, but no, you're absolutely right. A good, that a, way. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a good performer always blames his audience for bad performances. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's, that's, that's the tenet, isn't it? That's what they say. <laughs> when James went to, um, to Wales to the screening there, it, it was really well received there. And all the things that we, you know, you were saying, you, you know, there'd be a bad audience if they didn't get it. And I don't think they were coming out asking what the pandemic was or what it was outside. Mm. Where, you know, all of the, the themes of James's character and your character were, were observed, I, I felt, by the reaction. I think they laughed right. at, at the right moments. And, and then it became very poignant at the end, you know. And I, it, it did feel right, didn't it, James, the reaction yeah. to it? Yeah, no, it did, yeah. I mean, there was the, uh, a couple of Americans who... Who found uh, found the c word a bit fruity? Uh, <laughs> it, com it comes up like ten times really? in the first yeah. twenty seconds of the movie. So, well, so Adam, Adam Adam wrote the script. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but hang on. So really, so were the were the, well, they are, yeah. Were but it's yeah. the great thing when they, when they sort of say, you know, I found the c word. What cunt? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the one. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> so what was what was everybody's favourite? scene to work on um the first oh. I'm, I'm sorry guys the, the opening 30 seconds of the film was definitely my favorite to edit because right. being able to be that luxurious with the timing of of cuts to mm. black in the middle of sentences really truly having freedom to take a moment from an argument and just completely decontextualize that for an audience but still try to give it an escalation try to make it funny in the cut try to try to make it beat right, you know, that's so cool. And it's such a yeah. good way of starting a film as well. Just two people just screaming at each other in three different locations. <laughs> it's great. I loved it. I loved, I loved filming. I loved <laughs> filming that bit as well. And you, your guys' performance just really made that yeah. like, you know, bearable for the resets and trying to hold this thing. Like, and I'm just, a, a, you know, extremely weak, scrawny, uh, a boy, <laughs> so uh, like trying to sort of, you know, I just think, yeah, it was very, around, you know, it's very funny, and the insults just kept coming, didn't they? I mean, yeah, I, I really easy. enjoyed doing that scene as well. Um, my favorite one was the inside the dressing room when we're trying to make friends afterwards, but my favorite moment is, um. James going, you're a cunt. You're being a cunt, and that's fine. You're allowed to be a cunt. <laughs> like, it's, so, the, it's, the, so, it's so passive aggressive. The, the delivery of it was so spot on, and that's fine. You're allowed to be. But um, but yeah, my favourite bit was the um, was when he comes in to try and make up, and, and we're in the we're in the dressing room, and there's loads of sort of passive aggressiveness, and yeah, I like I like that it kind of starts at the the most extreme version of their yeah. like relationship. 
I think I think the biggest laugh in the film comes from when James, it, 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 the flashback to one week or two weeks earlier, when you first hear the line historically. So James says the line and there's just a moment, Adam, where you go, is that, is that how you're gonna do it? Yeah. That, that's the moment that gets the biggest laugh. That's the moment, isn't it? That it clicks, that everyone goes, ah. This is it's, 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 it's a, it, I think there's a few different clicks happening there. Yeah, there's, there's the click of, oh shoot, this is gonna escalate any second now. And they're so calm about it. They're so passive aggressive right from the start. You know where it's going to end up. So there's great dramatic irony there. But also the, the, I think the real click is that the audience goes, oh, these guys are idiots. They're arguing about <laughs> nothing. This, this is meaningless. Well, I'd, I'd be really interested actually to, 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 to see kind of what, uh, to hear from you guys, like kind of what some of the rest of the um, uh, audience feedback has been, particularly around lines where it's like, it actually is quite rooted in creative debates and discussions that happen not just in filmmaking but in all kinds of like writing and you know performing and all certainly kinds of in, in mine and yours writing as well yeah like yeah definitely so there's one line in particular <laughs> in that same in that same exact scene where adam delivers it, 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 it I, just, I i remember this being my favorite bit where it's like you go it might be funnier actually the way that yeah. <laughs> you know like kind, kind, kind of like sort of and it's, it's that it's that exact kind of um very pa very passive aggressive but trying to remain um uh diplomatic to the situation yeah. and try, trying to you know not have this escalate because nobody wants that confrontation um and yet it's clearly something that needs to be spoken about because it's like an elephant in the room <laughs> now because it seems like such a kind of um uh like exclusive i don't want to say like excu exclusively like um idea i think it's a bit like, like gatekeepery it could be just in jokey right it's very in baseball it's very yeah, in -jokey. It's, uh, yeah it's an actor's yeah. thing everybody yeah. knows that when they it's like all actors 100 percent. but at the same time i believe everyone who's had a job has a has had a manager who has that if they're especially bad managers of whom 90 percent of managers are um <laughs> They have this way of going, yeah, but do you think maybe they've yeah. been taught not to not to tell anyone anything. They've been taught yeah, that yeah. they should ask questions to get the thing they want back. So, yeah, so do yeah. you think maybe you should do this? That's not a question. That's still an order. Yeah. That, it's that moment of, yeah, but do you, yeah, 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 that Adam was emulating in that moment, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, do you not think, though, that maybe it would be better for you if you did this right now, according <laughs> yeah, yeah. to my opinion? Like, I, I think that, that, that was the thing is... Everyone's been patronised, right? Yeah. <laughs> The, with that line that you mentioned, Theo, um, the one about, um, I think it might be funnier if you, because that was like just before that is um, when I say, oh, if you say it like this, it might be more like more weighty. And then he's like, well, it's not weighty. It's a, it's a funny line. And then, and then I go, oh, it might be funnier the way I did it then. Because, and that, that's the reason that is one is because that is so like the conversations that me and you have, yeah. where it's like, I'll say something to you. And then you go, mm, no, I just, I feel like it needs to be more punchy. And that's a bit too jokey. And then I'll go, I think it is punchy though. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just appealing to you. I'm just like yeah. desperate to, I'll say yeah. whatever it takes to make you see it my way. Even if I have to just lie about how I feel about it. I think it is representing I think... Uh, young males actually. Like I think it is. Yeah, yeah no, it's definitely, um, yeah. it's definitely got a vegan message behind I, it. I think there's, <laughs> yeah. I think there's something very na there's something just very natural about about an instinct to kind of react like that anyway. So that's probably why like broader audiences, um, for want of a better term, could probably see you know the the the, the comedy in that as well. And yeah, I mean it's not just yeah. It's, yeah, and I think the way you two guys work is fine. I think that's really good to work. Like. <laughs> <laughs> How it is why it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, more more films should be made in 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 cramped, sweaty theatres that are right. We made it sweaty, cramped. Don't get me wrong; it's a beautiful theatre. It was our presence making it cramped and sweaty. But I think I think it does it is possible to. What's that? There's a phrase, isn't there? There's an epithet about you know, um, creativity is born of oppression. That's not that's not it, but it's something like that. <laughs> oh oh oh! Necessity is the mother of invention. I think it's something like it's something like that. Where oh, that's good. The more, the more, the harder a time you, you think you're going to have creating something, actually, the, probably the best the 
product. Yeah, when you when you when you can work with just kind of what you have available to you and just those things, and you've kind of limited yourself to it, definitely it makes it makes for yeah. greater creativity. Burgers. Yeah, as as someone who has a bit of difficulty myself seeing like seeing things visually and knowing what's going to be like I, I, I can sort of imagine scenes playing out and stuff but what i'm not very conscious of is like things that you said when we were working on it and planning things like um yeah we want it to be all in the same place but we don't want it to get boring for an audience you know you don't want the audience thinking oh, i'm seeing the same inside for the whole 20 minutes and things like that i never i i don't know if i'm conscious or as active a watcher of films, I'm much more passive. So I don't know if I necessarily like understand the kind of things that you'd have to do in order to avoid that. Like, was that, pr was that pretty tricky to get around that considering it's just like basically black walls in the whole thing? I love a close up. If I could film an entire feature length movie in close up, that that's what you see. That's where the story is for me. That's better. Thank you, Adam. That's, that, I much prefer that. Yeah. Even, even Frozen. <laughs> Than, than, a, than a wide. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm always, I, I, the number of camera people, James can attest to this, the number of camera operators that I've said, less headroom, less headroom, less headroom, because they're kind of framing like that. And I'm like, mm. there's nothing interesting about the space above a person's head. Like, <laughs> this right. is where it's at. So, yeah, yeah. so actually, I would be okay with watching just, I'd just get close up, close up, close up on both of you for 20 minutes. That's actually fine. I understand that that would be arduous for your <laughs> average viewer. Uh, and so, I don't know. It's 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 such it's it's a bit hack, right? But there are idiomatic things you can techniques you can employ in filmmaking. Basic things like if you shoot someone from above, they look smaller than they are, so you are making them diminutive through through suggestion of the camera. If you shoot mm. someone from slightly below their chest height, then then they look more heroic. If you put someone in the center of frame. Um, they're going to look more heroic or more classical. Um, if you put, set some offset someone to the side of the frame, that's a willful choice. And in indie filmmaking, you see a lot, but we did employ a lot of that stuff. Like to, to I, I, yeah. I think we deliberately worked in the blocking, particularly on whenever you guys were arguing, just being far apart so we could distance you as much as possible. Mm. Sometimes literally having a wall between you in the shot at the start of the film. And then the idea is slowly you get closer and closer together towards this moment of redemption. And that's, that's, that's what the whole thing is working towards, really. Yeah. Um, but again, we, we had the stairs that you were sat on. We had um, oh, we, we were spoiled uh, we had for the, choice, man, yeah. the, the cellar. Like there were location changes. It wasn't all the stage in the dressing yeah. room. The thing I was worried about, actually, was the three scenes that are just shot on a mobile phone resting right. on the table that the three, the crew members couldn't even be in the room for, apart from recording sound. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's, that's when I start to go, uh, this, this scene is a minute and 10 on its quickest take. Yeah. Mm. And it's just a mobile phone that's not moving. How is that, is that okay? And it was okay, it's fine. It's fine, it's compelling enough. I think an audience mm. will, they'll take whatever you give them, right? If it's, if it's nicely written and nicely performed. That was one of my favorite sort of bits of just that, the sort of knowing glances Adam gave to his phone when he was recording, <laughs> you know, my character not knowing he's being recorded, but it's just as wonderful little glances to it, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's funny you mentioned those, uh, like, a kind, like higher angles. Um, that was one of my favorite uh, shots to get. Louis, you mentioned it before when we were sort of like balancing and getting, <laughs> I mean, this is really just kind of using just what you've got available to, to ourselves. But we used a lot of my, of the 14 millimeter lens mm. to try and get in. This is where it sort of gets interesting because you kind of want to kind of conceal a lot of the space, um, as you were saying, sort of more, uh, uh, to, you know, towards the beginning of the film before we sort of like start, you know, revealing it. Um, but the, uh, but yeah, the, 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 that wide kind of lens was also pretty necessary to sort of get, you know, um both both people in um that over the head shot though was uh was um probably my favorite to get you know where we stood on the step ladder and it was and they're, and they're just yeah, kind of kind of arguing. do we yeah, need a health yeah. and safety warning for this part then do not yeah do not let a man dangle you off a step ladder while holding <laughs> someone else's camera kit <laughs> not if you want to yeah. be taken seriously as a filmmaker no. <laughs> or do that if you want to be yeah, no, quite. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I've got it. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Just as a, as a final note, Adam, do you have any ideas, any plans for a sequel? What's going to happen in, uh, in the penultimate curtain? Well, um, the penultimate curtain, what, the prequel? Oh, it could be a prequel, yeah. That would, yeah. We'll, do it as a, we'll do it as a prequel. And it's just like a really long walk to the theatre. <laughs> it looks like it. Lo it looks like you've got two ladybird antennas. So, sort of, oh, you move now. Myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. You see, <laughs> that's pretty good. Ain't no that's looks nice like, mate. I've had them implanted. Oh, that's how I tell. That's how I can just. I'm more in tune with nature. I can sort of tell when it's raining. Yeah. If that's I'm how outside. You knew. That's how you predicted this whole coronavirus thing. That's in, easy, yeah. And how did you decide to get the news out? By making a short film about it. <laughs> yeah, the world has to know. I'm going to really lightly imply it today. They knew in Wales first. Yeah. Yeah. They sure did. <laughs> yeah. it, would be, it, would, it would just be great to do another one of these with like, because um, uh, it's, it's a great little challenge to be able to, you know, limit those sort of, things like the script writing time and then and then do something two weeks after or however long it was and just have like three days um to do it it was just it was a great um it was just brilliant I just really enjoyed the whole thing it was it was such a whirlwind mm -hmm. like romantic sort of um uh relationship with with the film and it was just yeah it was really nice I really enjoyed it it was so much fun yeah I, I, I second that I I, I yeah yeah, yeah. Too, I I, I, it's, it's what we need Maybe what we need to do then, as soon as we're allowed, is to go to, back to the pub and see what happens. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly it. did exactly seem to it. help. Yeah. Beer was the, the catalyst. Um, I know I said final thing, like, about half an hour ago, but um, <laughs> there's something I've wanted to ask you, I guess, since, since I suppose this is more for the actors, really. But I guess, I guess the only you can, you can comment as well. We, I, I, it's potentially quite a pretentious thing that I said, I... I unilaterally decided for you guys that it would be better to film the scene the scenes in story order rather than script order so we yeah. started the first thing we shot was the first time you guys meet which is the four weeks ago flashback when i got into the edit i was like okay so this has to go here and actually maybe if we put this here oh no no but that means we can't have that here it was a it was a really interesting little puzzle thing to put together that ended up being precisely what you'd written in the script already. But um, did, does that help for actors? I think it'd be useful for every director to know whether or not that actually helps. Go on, James. Based, based solely on your answer <laughs> no. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, that is it, and that's gospel. That's gospel for everyone. That's gospel for every actor, every, every director yeah. dynamic. Go. Someone write this down, right? Um, <laughs> I, I, I must admit, I, I, don't, um, I don't really remember that that being um anything other than just a joy to work on it felt like it was it very much felt like you were very much directing and in charge of the, of the shoot and i think right. you, you you led to the whole production very well and 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 i think for us it was very easy to be actors in that film because oh, so you're saying it didn't matter at all times it felt like i knew exactly what you wanted which was quite oh, nice am i right in thinking that what you were saying was we went we did it in how it is in the script when you sent your first draft through, the only <clears throat> once we'd once we'd landed on a script that was completely good and, and, and happy to film, I think I got you to do a new version of the script where you you reordered the That's scenes right, yeah. and we filmed that script. And then it right. was uh, the, the original script that you wrote is was I used it in the edit. Right, right, but right. But we didn't actually have on the set the the original structure of the script. Well, showing that I don't remember what the case was, it really helped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, th I, I. Let's I assume just, it like, did. <clears throat> I think it did actually, because um, you're not having to jump from one thing to another. Basically, you're not having to jump from this like naivety and and everything to then going really extreme and then going back to here. My actual favourite bit was um, the improvised bit at the end when we actually do the play. <laughs> Yeah. That, that's that another was... click moment, isn't it? Right? That's another moment. Because of those improvs, the audience for the film goes, Oh no, they really are idiots. It's all fine. Yeah. The play's yeah. nonsense. I loved how shit the play was. And we only had like five minutes to film all those bits as well. I remember it was right at the end of the day and we were running about doing all these bits. You guys yeah. got some you guys got also got some very, you know, um Amdram tropes <laughs> in there. Like it was perfect. It was like the kind of like interpretive dance. Yeah, mm. yes, yeah, yeah, totally yeah. dance and yeah, it was over the, 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 you know, performing for the people at the back. 
It's the kind of earnest thing. face as yeah. well. You both had yeah. the earnest face, the earnest stage actor's face. I, I love, I love the idea <laughs> that you're, you know, you're performing to no one. You know, you're performing to no one. Um, you know that it's just that no one would ever, ever come, and yet you're still performing for the people at the back. Like there's going to be people who can't, <laughs> who can't hear you, which is like the rule number one in in theatre. And I, and I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's what you had to do. Or even that's great. Adam, even that Reese gets stage fright before. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Before I mean, an yeah. empty audience, like, yeah. oh my god, there's no one here. Ah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, what am I thinking? You know, that this was the whole, the whole thing, obviously. But yeah, it was. That's uh, why the film works. The, the the themes tie so together good. there, and and. Yeah. And he makes the choice to perform anyway, which is the key. Have they the have film. they gone a bit mad? Is this also partly cabin fever, um, uh, seclu seclusion? You know. Um, and after a few months in lockdown, how will we be able to tell? True. Maybe they are, but so are yeah. we. I'd I'd happily do a sequel about two madmen running around an apocalyptic <laughs> sub suburb suburb of London. That sounds great. Just slowly dying because of the hundred percent virus. Hundred percent. Yeah. Kind of could it, fi final curtain brackets definitely this time. Definitely ultimate yeah. curtain. Ultimate <laughs> curtain. Final curtain two. Curtain harder. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. That concludes this meeting of Sage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was great, guys. Oh, Thank good you. Yeah. Th thanks for arranging this. Getting us yeah, it was tremendous. It. It's a shame we can't gather in a in a in a in the theatre to watch it. Um but soon we will. We will be. We will be able to soon. Yeah. I can't and, wait to do that. Sequel. Yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. It'll be so much fun. It has yeah, to be will. the when we go and watch it in the hen chickens, then we'll have a beer afterwards and, and that's start it. thinking the next one. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how Hollywood works. <laughs> <laughs>